Hello everyone, uh, this is Mark Perkins coming to you today. Thanks very much uh, for listening in. Um, what we're talking about today is uh, something that a lot of our clients have been asking about when they are looking at their daily technical levels that we send through to you twice a day. They're not quite sure how to interpret them and um, I thought let me go ahead and explain how to utilize these things so it uh, just makes life a little bit easier uh, when you read these uh, daily technical level reports in the morning. All right, so basically what it is, it's based on pivot point trading. And I'm going to talk to you now about what we will be uh, discussing. All right, so I'm going to have a quick look at what pivot points are, uh, a couple of different ways and on how to trade these uh, significant levels as well. So we're going to look at some breakout trading, validation trading, an advanced trading example, and then we're just going to have a conclusion as well. Okay, so just in terms of introduction, using pivot points as a trading strategy were originally used by four traders many years ago. Uh, this was a nice simple way for, for four traders to have some idea of where the market was heading during the course of the day with only a few simple calculations. The pivot point is the level at which the market direction changes for the day. All right, so using some simple maths and uh, the previous day's high, low and close, a series of points is then calculated. Uh, these points are then uh, deemed to be critical support and resistance levels. And for those of you that have um, you know, listened uh, to my original um, videos, you should know what support and resistance levels are. The pivot level and levels calculated from that are collectively known as your pivot levels. All right, every day the market you're following has an open, high, low, and a close for the day. Uh, some markets like 5 to 24 hours, but... Uh, uh, generally, most of them uh, you use uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that's New York time as the open and close. This information uh, basically contains all the data you need to calculate the pivot levels. The reason why these uh, levels are so popular is that pivot points are predictive as opposed to lagging. So what that means, what we mean by that is many indicators are obviously based off historical data, and uh, it's very, uh, you know, it can, can be difficult sometimes uh, to predict what is likely to happen uh, going forward. Uh, you know, as we've mentioned before, the market is cyclical and uh, tends to, uh, you know, follow a, a pattern. And uh, patterns that were formed historically do tend to uh, re, re, rear their head again every now and then. Um, you use the information of the previous day to calculate potential turning points for the day you're about to trade. Okay, because so many traders follow pivot points, we will often find that the market reacts at these levels. It's very similar to things like Fibonacci levels, uh, you know, support and resistance as well. I mean, like if you combine these all together, what you'll tend to find is that, you know, there are quite a few pending orders at these uh, various levels. Okay, so if, if, for those of you that are interested in calculating these things, uh, here basically is the formula, or well, a, a specific uh, type of, of calculating uh, pivot points. There are different uh, formulas that you can utilize, but this is probably the most common one. Uh, so uh, just to basically calculate your first pivot point, uh, you know, what you're going to do is, you know, you'll take your high, your close, and your low from yesterday, divide that by three, and uh, that will give you your sort of your, your base or your, your base pivot point. Now, uh, for, for things on the upside, we're looking at three resistance levels. I uh, would take our pivot point minus the, the low for yesterday times by two. Uh, resistance two will get the pivot point plus a resistance one minus uh, support one. And resistance three will be the high uh, plus two times the pivot minus the low. On the downside, we have three support levels. Uh, you know, two times the pivot minus the high. The pivot minus R1 minus S1. The low uh, minus two times high minus the pivot. Okay, so as you can see from the, the formula, you're going to end up with seven uh, levels. You've got three up levels, you've got three down levels, and you've got like a midpoint that you'll end up with. Okay, so just, uh, you know, the, the significance of market opens is fairly important here, and uh, we can utilize that in conjunction with our pivot points. But one of the key points is to understand when trading pivots uh, in the FX market, that breaks tend to occur around one of the market opens. Okay, so what we mean by that is around the European open, the the U.S. open or the Asian market opening as well. You know, those are obviously, obviously, we goes out saying the U.K. market as well. Uh, the reason for this is that the immediate influx of traders entering the market at the same time. So there's a whole bunch of traders coming in there and, and buying to get uh, the best possible order filled for, for their particular uh, trading platform. Now, these traders, they go into the office, they take a look at how the price is traded overnight, 
and what data was released and then adjust their portfolios accordingly. During the quieter time periods, such as between the US close of uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard and the Asian opening time of 7 p.m., so that basically around about 10 till 2 in the, you know, 10 at night till 2 in the morning, um, even through the Asian session as well, this can, be hap this, this can happen. Prices may remain confined for hours between the pivot level and either the support or resistance levels. This provides the perfect environment for range-bound traders, uh, so not, not your trend traders. Okay, so we're going to look at some entry points here. If the market opens above the pivot point, then the, theoretically the bias for the day is for long trades as long as the price remains above the pivot point. If the market opens below the pivot point, then the bias for the day is for short trades as long as the market remains below the pivot point. You know, the three most important pivot points are R1, S1, and the actual pivot point itself. Look for a reversal or break of the first resistance or support level. By the time the market reaches R2, R3, or S2 and S3, the market will already be overbought or oversold, and these levels should be used for exits rather than entries. A perfect setup would be for the market to open above the pivot level and then stall slightly at R1 and then go on to R2. That is obviously, of course, if you're going long. Uh, you would enter on a break of R1 with the target of R2, and if the market was really strong, close, uh, half at uh, R2 and uh, target 3 with the remainder of your position. Now, so just a little bit of active management required there. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a few uh, pivot point trading techniques. You know, the reality is, unfortunately, life is not that simple, and we have to deal with uh, each trading day the best we can, so it's not really a perfect world. All right, so let's take a look at an example here on the 12th of August last year. Uh, the euro dollar had the following, the high of 122.97, a low of 122.13, a close of 122.49. All right, so that basically gave us, you know, if we basically use our formula to calculate our pivot points and resistance levels, uh, a pivot point of 122.53, uh, our three uh, resistance levels and our three support levels. All right, so as you'll see there, the resistance levels of 2293, 2337, 2377, and then conversely, the support of 2209, 2169, and 2125. All right, and this is basically a, a screenshot of that with, uh, with our pivot levels uh, superimposed onto the chart. The green line is the pivot point, the blue lines are our three resistance levels, and the red lines are our, our three support levels. Right. Uh, there are many ways uh, to trade this day uh, using pivot points, but I'm going to walk you through a couple of them and discuss why some are in good uh, in certain situations and why some are, are bad. You know, if they don't, you know, if it's not possible, it doesn't always work out 100%. All right, so one of the techniques we're going to talk about is the breakout trade. All right, it opened below the pivot point, so our bias is for short trades. All right, and uh, what we see happening here is look for a downside break out of the channel that was formed. So if we have a look here, we see a nice channel that was formed. All right, we'd have our stop loss a little bit above the, the upper channel. Uh, we're looking to enter as it breaks through below, uh, you know, the, the downside of the channel there with our target being the first support level. All right, so as I've basically mentioned here, in this type of trade, you would have your sell entry order just below the lower channel line with a stop order just above the upper line uh, and target of S1. The problem on this day was that S1 was just very close to the breakout level and there was just not enough meat in the trade. All right, so there was only 13 pips on this trade, so it wasn't really worth our while to, to get into this particular trade. This can be a good entry for you. Just because it was not suitable uh, this day does not mean it would not be suitable the next day. The next uh, technique we're going to use is the pullback trade. Um, and basically what we have here is the market passes through S1 and then pulls back slightly. All right, so if we have a look here, an entry order is placed below support, which in this case was the most recent low before the pullback. Okay, so if we have a look here, and I've basically written it on the chart, so the market was strong, uh, was not strong enough to take out the support level, and the market passes through S1 here. So we're basically looking at, at our pullback, we're looking to short, all right, a stop is then placed above the, the pullback, the most recent high peak, and a target set for S2. So we're looking for, um, you know, S2, which is our red line down here. Uh, unfortunately, just the market wasn't strong enough to take out the support. Okay, so the problem again on this day was that the target of S2 was too close, and the market never took out the previous support, which tells us that the market sentiment is beginning to change. All right, so what we could see is, is potential upshift uh, back up to our, 
our, uh, our pivot levels. All right, so two further examples of using pivot points. Many strategies can be developed using the pivot level as a base, but the accuracy of, of using pivot lines increases when Japanese candlestick formations can also be identified. So we want to use this in conjunction with our other indicators as well. All right, so for example, if prices trade below the central pivot point for most of the session and then uh, make a little flurry above the pivot point while simultaneously creating a reversal formation, such as a shooting star, doji, or hanging man, uh, you could sell short in anticipation of the price resuming trading back below the pivot point. A perfect example of this is shown in a 30-minute uh, uh, US dollar Swiss franc chart. Uh, basically remain range bound uh, be between the first support zone and the pivot level for most of the Asian trading session. However, when Europe joined the market, traders began uh, taking uh, uh, the Swiss franc higher just to break above the central pivot. And this is basically uh, the, the chart uh, where we saw this happening. All right, so this chart shows the pivot point being used in cooperation with candlestick patterns to predict a trend reversal. Notice how the descent was stopped by the second support level. All right, so here we go. We basically have our, our pivot point, our, our green pivot point there. The pivot point was challenged and then came back down. So this is a classic. If we have a look at the, the, the doji there, it's a classic a reversal pattern here. We see it uh, break to the downside, passing through our midpoint. Uh, and this is our first support level and uh, then our secondary support level here as well. So our first target probably would have been S1, uh, retraced a little bit. And then uh, as, we, as we saw, what we could have done there is close that half of our trade and let the, the other half of the trade run for S2, or you could have uh, obviously closed out the entire trade, or just let it run through to S2 as well, all based on your perception of uh, what uh, you thought the candlesticks were doing here as well. Okay, so pivot point validation. Another strategy traders can use is to look for prices to obey the pivot level, therefore validating the level as a solid support or resistance zone. In this type of strategy, you're looking to see the price break through pivot level, reverse, and then trend back towards the pivot level. If the price proceeds to drive through the pivot point, this is an indication that the pivot level is not very strong and is therefore less useful as a trading signal. However, if prices hesitate around that level or validate it, then the pivot level is much more significant and suggests that the move lower is an actual break, which indicates that there may be a continuation move. Right, so here's, a, here's an example of this. We, we're looking at uh, the pound Swiss franc here on a 15-minute chart. shows an example of prices obeying the pivot line. All right, so we can see there uh, the price uh, sort of bouncing off that, pivot, that, that daily pivot point right there. Uh, for the most part, prices were uh, first confined within the midpoint and pivot level. At the European opening, uh, it rallied and broke above the pivot, as you'll see there. So it broke to the upside. Prices then retraced back uh, to the pivot level, held it, and proceeded to rally once again. So we see it uh, broke through the pivot level very quickly, retraced back down to the pivot level, and then continued on in an upward trend. The level was tested once more right before the US market opened, at which point traders should have placed a buy order since the pivot level had already been proved to be a significant support level. So here we go. This is just before the US market opened. It gets tested once again, and then we continue on our merry way on, on to the upside. Okay, so an advanced trading example here. As mentioned, there are lots of ways to trade with pivot points. I'm just highlighting a few. A, a more advanced method is to use the cross of, of two moving averages as a confirmation of a breakout. You can even use combinations of indicators to help you make a decision. It might be the cross of two averages, and also MACD must be in buying mode as well. Okay, so an example of this, uh, the market passed through S1 and then retraced to S1 line again. It then formed a channel, so here we basically have our channels being uh, created, and around this time we had a cross of averages, all right, so we've got two moving averages on there, and they were basically crossing over, and then we see a signal uh, from the MACD as well. All right, and then with a breakout of the channel line. So uh, here we go. We see uh, you know, a breakout of the, of the channel. We see a moving average crossover, and we see an indication of, of the MACD saying goodbye as well. So we use three uh, you know, three different uh, indicators here to say, well, listen, we think this is a, a buy opportunity, uh, and all three uh, obviously uh, works in unison quite well. Okay, so just to conclude, most traders prefer to take the pivots 
off of the of the daily chart and then apply to intraday charts. Okay, so you can use it on the hourly chart or 30 minutes or 15 minutes. If a pivot point is calculated using price information from a shorter time frame, this tends to reduce its accuracy and significance. Okay, pivots can be especially popular in the FX market since many currency pairs do tend to fluctuate between these levels. Range-bound traders will, will enter a buy order near identified levels of support and a sell order when the asset nears the upper resistance. Pivot points also enable trend and breakout traders to spot key levels that need to be broken for a, a move to qualify as a breakout. These technical indicators can be very useful as market opens. Having an awareness of where these potential turning points are located is an excellent way for individual investors to become more attuned to market movements and make more educated transaction decisions. Given their ease of calculation, pivot points can also be incorporated into many trading strategies. The flexibility and relative simplicity of pivot points definitely makes them a useful addition to your trading toolbox. Thank you very much uh, for listening in today, guys. Um, so hopefully that uh, helps you interpret these daily technical levels that we send through to you on a daily basis. Keep an eye out for them because they are very, very useful tools. Uh, if you want to calculate your own pivot points for various other uh, entities or instruments, you can go and Google pivot point calculator or anything like that. Uh, and then you can obviously then manually input these lines yourself. Other than that, thanks for listening in and hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye there.